Hi everyone, it's Benitez here. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. In today's WTF episode, I'm going to share with you all how you can use PowerApps cards for your notifications in Dataverse with Power Automate. In 2021, I was a speaker for the Zero to Hero Learning Program that's run by Victor Dantas. I presented two sessions and in one of them, I covered adaptive cards. Now the use case was to create a notification using Power Automate Cloud Flows whenever a new insurance claim was created in Dataverse. The adaptive card would then be posted to a Microsoft Teams channel with details of the insurance claim. It also included hyperlinks to view the insurance claim and the member's insurance policy in the model driven app. Fast forward to today, there's now PowerApps Cards in preview. PowerApps Cards is a next step up from adaptive cards and you can use them with Power Automate Cloud Flows. If you want to learn more about PowerApps Cards, I recommend watching a couple of videos. The first one is from a Microsoft 365 and Power Platform community call with Matt McLaren. And the second video is from a Paracat Live episode with Matt McLaren and Anthony Yutes. In this WTF episode, I'll share how to open model-driven app forms and views from PowerApps Cards. I'll cover how to do the following in this WTF episode, so stick along with me till the end. I'll start with number one, create a PowerApps card. Navigate to make.powerapps.com. Now initially, you may think that you can create a card inside a solution by clicking on new, select more, select other, and then select card. However, when you do this, you end up with this, which isn't correct. Keep in mind that this is the current experience when filming this WTF episode. It could change in the future. What you need to do is click on more in the left-hand side menu pane and you'll see cards. You can then pin it and it will display permanently in the menu. Select cards. This will show you your cards and this tab will display yours and your team's cards. Click on new card or create a card. Enter a name for your card and a description. Click create. The PowerApps card designer will now appear. This should look familiar because it's similar to the PowerApps Studio user interface. You have the tree view to see your screens and elements. There's a drag and drop UI elements such as adding inputs and changing the layout. There are some UI elements that aren't available compared to the ones available in PowerApps Studio, so keep that in mind. You also have the same ability of adding data sources. And lastly, there's variables, which I'll cover shortly. The first thing you want to do is add your data source. As of when this WTF episode was filmed, Dataverse is the only data source available but the product team do plan on enabling other connectors in future updates. Since we're applying the same technique from the last WTF episode of using environment variables to build URLs for model-driven apps, I'm going to select the Dataverse connector. It will use my signed-in user account for the connection. Next, I'll add the environment variable definition table. This is the table that contains the environment variables that have been created in a solution. Next, I'll add the environment variables value table. This is the table that contains the current value of an environment variable. The second thing you want to do is create variables for the cloud flow. These variables will become input values in the PowerApps cards action in the cloud flow. I'll create several variables in the PowerApps card. I'm going to create variables that will be used on the interface of the card. I'll refer to these as visible variables. And the other variable I'll create is one that will be used in the interface of the card, but in the background. I'll refer to this as an invisible variable. For my visible variables, they will be the values from the columns of the newly created challenge. I'll display the name of the challenge, the description of the challenge, and the owner of the challenge. I'll create a variable for the name of the challenge. In the name field, I'll enter var challenge name, and for the type dropdown field, I'll keep it as text. This default value field implies what you want the value to be when the PowerApps card is created. It's optional, and for my use case, I want to leave it blank since it will be populated by the cloud flow. Next, there's two options on whether the value of the variable is either reset each time the card is open or is left as is. For my use case, I'll be using the permanent option. Now the next couple of checkboxes were confusing initially, so I reached out to Matt McLaren and Anthony Ewitz in the PowerApps product team. For the allow this variable to be customized checkbox, 
This will turn the variable into an input for the card. For the customization is required checkbox, the value of the variable is required. In other words, it's mandatory to be set by the Cloudflow, Power Virtual Agent Bot, or from the card's play page. Since I want my variables to be populated through the Cloudflow, I'll tick these two checkboxes. Now, when you expand the additional variable information, you'll see title and description. These will be visible in Cloudflows and in bots for Power Virtual Agents. I'll show you shortly what this will look like in Cloudflows. I'll enter in a title and a description, and now I'll click Save. We'll repeat this for the other two visible variables, description and owner. For my invisible variable, the GUID of the challenge, I'll repeat the same steps. After the data source has been added and the variables have been created, I can now build the Power Apps card. By default, there will be a couple of controls already added to the screen of the card. I'm going to update the name of the first text label. Now, by the way, I'm following Matt Devaney's Power Apps coding standards for Canvas apps when naming the controls. I highly recommend you check out this free resource when building your apps. Next, I'll update the text to be the title of my card. I'll update it to new challenge created, and for a bit of fun, I'll add the light bulb emoji. And lastly, I'll change the style by making the text larger. I'll next update the second text label by changing the name again, followed by the text to be the name of the challenge and make it bolder. I'll now add a few more controls. I'll select the text label and it will automatically be placed underneath the previous text label. I'll update the name and for the text, I'll reference the var challenge name variable. As a reminder, this is an input variable that will be populated from the cloud flow, which I'll show you after I build the card. I'll also update the spacing to none. This will be the structure I apply to mimic key value pairs like in adaptive cards, where I have one text label acting as a key and the other acting as a value. I'll repeat the same steps for the two other visible variables of description and owner. Last two controls are two buttons. I'll select the button control. I'll name the button and for the title, I'll enter view challenge. I'll add another button control and name the button, followed by entering a title of view active challenges. This will be the same functionality that you saw in my previous WTF episode, where a user will click on the hyperlink and it will open either the form or the view in the model driven app. The URL is going to be built within the property of the button using PowerFX. Environment variables will be referenced again using PowerFX. I'll be using the same environment variables in the solution that you saw from the last WTF episode. If you're familiar with Canvas apps, the launch function can be used to direct a user to a browser and load the URL which I showed you in the last episode. However, in Power Apps Cards, if you try entering the launch function in your button control, you'll come across this error message because it's currently not supported in Power Apps Cards. There's a list of PowerFX functions that are supported in the Microsoft Learn documentation. So what can we use since the launch function is not currently supported? Well, we can switch the type over to open URL and then use PowerFX to build the URLs. One thing to be aware of is that the URL string must start with HTTPS colon and forward slashes. To build the URLs, I'll be concatenating strings again as seen from the last two episodes. I'll use string interpolation rather than the concatenate function or the ampersand operation. I'll refer you again to Matt Devaney's blog post where he explains how to use the string interpolation method in detail. I'm going to apply a similar PowerFX formula from a Canvas app that I showed you in the last episode. I'll enter the dollar sign character followed by a double quote for string interpolation. Then I'll enter a curly brace to delineate the embedded expression and I'll enter the lookup function. Next, I'll use logic in PowerFX to retrieve the current value from the Dataverse environment URL environment variable. Now I'm gonna pause here and let you know of one minor inconvenience I've come across. You see how the PowerFX editor is showing as a single line at the moment, and I can't use my mouse to expand the expression editor bar either. I have to click on this dropdown. So what I do as a temporary workaround is build the expression in a label in PowerApp Studio and then copy and paste it back into the PowerFX editor. I replace my placeholder text with my invisible variable for the challenge good. Similar to the PowerFX formula in the last episode, 
there's the app name query parameter where the parameter value is referenced from the app name environment variable. Then there's the page type query parameter, which is entity record. Next, there's the ETN query parameter where the parameter value is referenced from the challenges table logical name environment variable. And lastly, there's the ID query parameter where the parameter value is referenced from my invisible variable that I created in the pair ups card. This will be an input value that will be populated in the Cloudflow. Quick note here, you'll see these yellow squiggly lines, which is a delegation warning that you can safely ignore. Delegation in Parafix cards doesn't have the same support as delegation in Canvas apps, but because the expression is only performing a string comparison on a single field, it's fine. For the view active challenge button, it's mostly the same with the only difference of changing the page type to entity list and referencing the view ID environment variable along with providing the view type definition of 1039 for a system view. As a reminder, I did cover this in my last WTF episode, so watch that episode if you haven't already done so. Now the cool thing about Paraf's cards is that you can preview your card in real time with the data which you can't do in adaptive cards. This is through the play button which I'll click. A new browser tab will open and I'll first be prompted to enter the values for the required input variables. So I'm going to copy and paste the values from a challenge row in my model driven app. The card will then load and you can see the data. I'll click on the first button and it will open the Dataverse environment in a new browser tab and open the model driven app with the form for the challenge. Pretty cool, right? This send button will generate a link that you can copy and paste into a Microsoft Teams message. Since this card will be populated by a Power Automate Cloudflow, we won't be using this feature. Now that the card has been created, it can be added to a solution. Click on Add Existing, then select the card under Other. The card will now be added to the solution. Next, I'll show you how to pass values from a Cloudflow to the input variables in the card. In my Cloudflow, the trigger is when a new challenge is created in Dataverse, followed by an action that will retrieve the user details of the owner associated to the challenge. To call the Power Apps card, Click on Add New Step and search for Cards for Power Apps and select the connector. You'll see a couple of actions and the one to select is Create Card Instance. In the drop down field, select the card that you want to create. You'll then see the input variables as input values for the action. This is a title and the description of the input variables from the card. I'll use dynamic content from the trigger as the input values for the challenge name, description, and challenge ID. For the owner, I'll use dynamic content from the previous action to reference the full name from the user table. Next, click on Add New Step and search for Post Card. Select the action Post Card in a chat or channel. In the Post As drop-down field, select Power Apps. Then select where you want to post the card to. I'm posting to a channel and so I'll select the team and the channel. Lastly, select the card input value as dynamic content. And that's it. Save the Cloudflow and it's ready to be triggered. Okay, now it's time for the demo. I'm in my innovation challenge model driven app and I have a new challenge here which I'm going to save. This will now create the challenge in Dataverse and my Power Automate Cloudflow will be triggered next. Let's head over to the Cloudflow run history and select the refresh button. We can see that the Cloudflow is now running and it has now succeeded. Let's head over to Microsoft Teams and I'll go to the Microsoft Teams channel that the card would have been posted to. Now initially, you may not see your card load automatically, but that's okay. What you can do is click on the refresh hyperlink and this will now load your card. We can see the challenge name, description and owner from those input variables that were populated by the Cloudflow. Now, if I click on this first button, this should load the new challenge record in my model driven app. Ta-da! Okay, so let's check out the second button. When I click on the second button, this will now open up the active challenges system view in my model driven app. And there you have it. That is how you can use Power Apps cards for your notifications in Dataverse with Power Automate Cloudflow. I hope you learned something new. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next WTF episode. Bye. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go.